What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom and Eric Sheet Tabor. We're going to be talking through today, Friday's massive MLB slate that is probably going to have, I mean, I don't want to say concentrated shock, but I can't see how San Francisco and Colorado on DraftKings won't be really popular at the prices that they're at. So, so, so Sheets, I'm ready to get into it. I, I did not have a good day yesterday. It wasn't like terrible. I had some, you know, okay as shots, just couldn't quite get anything to string together. Um, we did have some nice calls, you know, that you mentioned the Brubaker. I had the Barrios, and we could have done something with that, but uh, we couldn't couldn't quite get there. But anyway, how'd you do? And then what do you think about this slate? Well, uh, again, I had a, a good uh, ap- afternoon slate, as 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 I mentioned. And I did actually, I was looking, I think I made like a little bit of money in, in the night slate because, again, I, I forced in like 20% Brubaker. And what that did in – um in some lineups was got me some Brian Reynolds because he's on Pittsburgh also. Yep. So I was able to get a couple, couple in there. And then, um, and I didn't play San Diego, which helped, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, so, uh, so tonight, so instead of the five game slate last night, um, th- today we have a 1500 game slate. As you mentioned, though, we have one team that's really standing out and I'm just probably not going to be able to play them. Um, there's a lot of pitchers you can choose from, so you can try to get different that way if you do want to play some San Francisco's. But, I mean, we'll get to it, but San Francisco's are always rough because because of the pinch hit risk in, inherent in that team, you know? So yeah. we'll we'll, uh, we'll talk about that when we get there, I guess. Yep, absolutely. And as I always try to remind everybody on these giant slates, I, I, I don't know how I'm not going to play some San, some San Francisco on, on DraftKings. I really don't. Just Arena is one of arguably one of the worst three, three or four pitchers in baseball. It's in Colorado and – they cost nothing. So uh, I'm, I'll try to figure out a way to get to, 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 to you know, I'm, I'm probably going to end up using them as complementary pieces to, because I, I just don't want to go with the full stack at the ownership they're going to be. But uh, with that said, let's jump into it, go into game by game here and uh, let's see what we got here. Your, your screen. Yeah, let me uh, pull up your screen and we'll go game by screen. game. Okay. So right off the bat, we got uh, two decent pitchers, well, two, decent, two, two good pitchers. One might consider really, really good pitcher against two pretty decent uh hitting teams i guess um i mean what, what do you what do you like you, you like where do you have nola rank today i mean is it, you have one of your top ones i presume i have him high but i i'm a little bit worried about the matchup i don't think i want to play bassett i think I, I mean they're both on my list but nola would be higher um i think that i i don't think i want to play bassett here but i am open to to both. And I always, I'm always a little higher on Nola than everybody else's. Um, it pretty much, you know, when you put a bunch of aces out there, I always want sort of want to play him just because of, you know, the historically very, always very low walk rate, high strikeout rate, and he'll pitch to, you know, you'll make some contact off of him, but he's, I just think, I just think you feel good and feel good about him in general. So I, I'm going to, right now I have Nola pretty high, but I don't know where I, I'll, I'll figure out where I have him ranked by the time we're done. And I'm not interested in any hitting from this game. Yeah, I have currently Nola kind of tied for third, fourth, fifth, sixth, actually. Oh, wow. I mean, I have like a whole bunch of guys in that range. I don't have Nola rated as high. I guess uh, I guess my my stuff I look at has, has you know, they, they give the Mets a lot more respect, I suppose, um, than some of these other pitches with much worse, much easier matchups. So um, I, I'm probably not going to end up uh, prioritizing Nola. And again, when we're talking about hitting, we're, we're, we're talking about the context of the slate, right? I can tell you right now, San Francisco is going to project to be the top stack. So what we're looking for are, are reasonable pivots. And I'm not getting to either of these guys, either Mets or Philly, as one of those. So I think this game for me is probably going to be something of a pass. Yeah, I think it's, uh, that's totally reasonable. Um uh, yeah, there's no way I'm, I, I'm going to try and find a way to play hitters for no reason here. All right. What but, do you think? But, about- if you, but if you get Nola at lower ownership because of the Mets matchup, um, I mean, I know you like him like again, again, more than more than some people do. Maybe it's all like, listen, it's not enough if you want to play San Francisco just to play Nola, but that's at least a step in the right direction, I think. I think that's, I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and again, I think he's going to end up being owned, but I, I don't know. I'm still curious to see how it all shakes out because it's I feel like it's going to get a couple guys are going to be pretty chalky. Um, all right. What do you think? So this Boston Baltimore game, I think is kind of interesting. Um, I, I, you know, I'm a little bit higher on always trying to trying to pick on Jordan Lyles just because he gives up home runs. He can get wild at times. 
always a high range of outcome guys. Um, Baltimore stadium doesn't play nearly as well as it used to for hitting. So, but I, but I do have Boston as a, as a legitimate other stack. And if the slate was different, I don't know exactly what I would need to do, but there's a part of me that almost wants to consider Cutter Crawford here. Uh, it's, it's sort of a reachy play, but um, I did consider it. And at the same time, I think that Baltimore's bats are, are somewhat in play. So I, I like the hitting in this game a little more than the implied total has him. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I have, um, I have Boston as kind of a good kind of, you know, within the, within the, within that group of second, second best stacks. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I have three other teams kind of four other teams kind of tied in there and I actually have them as a decent value as well, especially if you use listen, this, this, this Arroyo has shown up as a good play every game and he seems to be doing really, really well. Um, they bat him in the decent part of the order and he's, um, and uh, okay. he's usually pretty cheap. Yep. Um, okay, so. Yeah. And Verdugo had a really big game at a cheap price the other day also. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Boston, Boston looks to be a really, really nice place to start actually uh, against a guy that, again, you like to, uh, that we like to pick on anyway. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's a good start. And, and Baltimore, like you said, I think that's a little bit, I think you implied this is maybe a little bit worse. Um, but they're certainly going to be, you know, a, a team to consider also. So I'm not going to get to either of the pitchers here, but I definitely have interest in Boston and maybe some interest in Baltimore. Yeah, I think Baltimore more feels like a mini stack, but I do think like it's interesting with their lineup because they have they kind of have decent power one through nine um, ish or without the with the exception of maybe Vavra. But uh, they, they, they actually have like power upside. And I, I think that they're always an interesting team that sort of gets overlooked and and, you know, that uh, shout out to Shrek out there. I don't know if you know him, but he, you know, we, he's, we've uh, we've gone back and forth and we had a couple one twos back and forth in the, during the NBA season. But he won three of the, the three big tournaments last week and he did it all with Baltimore stacks and they were all unowned every time. So I always just keep an eye out for Baltimore. They're a lot better offensively than I think they get credit for. Uh, all right. Next game, you have uh, Cincinnati Pittsburgh, right? I do. And what do you want to do, if anything, here? Because this feels like a blah. Yeah, the only thing I would recommend this game is maybe a one-off of Jake Fraley at twenty five hundred. I'm just I'm just kind of looking at my board here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, aside from that, I'm really not getting to either of the pitchers, and it doesn't look like I'm getting to any of the hitters. Before we even move on, is there any um? I I, I saw a little blurb like literally at the side of my eye that there was some a, a game or two with uh with weather concerns. Do you remember which ones those, those were? Uh, the Minnesota I mean, Colorado has their thing, but I don't think it's serious. I don't think it's serious that serious in any of them that I, that I okay. can right now. Okay. Um, but I don't know. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that until later. Um, well, obviously. <laughs> oh yeah. About, yeah. But, um, Oh, actually, you know what? I, I, um, now, now that I'm looking at this a little bit more, listen, if you want value, you can always, as I said, I mean, you can always play Cincinnati. And, and um, the guy that – another guy aside from Fraley that I have is um, is Aquino. Um, you know, every once in a while, he'll do something with his lofty 173 batting average. But, you know, he's <laughs> he's, 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 20, he's 2,200. And uh, if you want to, you know, pay up for pitching and not play San Francisco's, I mean, you're just looking for anything, right? Um so I, I definitely have the Reds rated as a good value, as I always do. And I'm probably going to end up getting some of them, as I always do. Um, but, you know, don't have high expectations for Cincinnati, as usual. Yeah, I, I can get a little bit behind because of the prices are crazy on Cincinnati outside of India and uh, Farmer. Everybody else is like 2K. Yeah. Moustakas is 2K. I know he's had a horrible season. But uh, I, I don't mind the idea of trying to pick on 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 Ashcroft. And I also like uh, – I do like Brian Reynolds on the other side. I know he hit two home runs, so it feels easy to say that today. But I just I just feel like he's constantly – I don't want to say he's like underpriced. Well, yeah, he is, I guess, in the sense that he's, he's better than the guys who are priced like him all the time in the outfield. So I like Brian Reynolds as a one-off if you wanted to think about that. Uh, all right, let's move over to uh, Toronto and your Yankees and another uh, – two decent pitchers. I don't think I'm going to stack Toronto against Tyon. I think he's good enough for me to avoid that. And I don't feel desperately like I need to play Gaussman, but I just want to point out again, as I said yesterday with Barrios, this Yankees 
they're more the Yankees in, in, in name than they are anything else these days. They don't hit the ball. Um, Dude, you were going to start streaming against the Yankees every freaking game. I, mean, I know. And I did not think that was going to happen this season, especially the way they started. But I, I think Gaussman is completely legitimately in play at, at 8,200. But I'm deciding whether I want to go for it. I, I think it makes sense. So I'm probably going to have him as a, a lower owned option. But I think he's very reasonable and uh, no tie on for me. And no, uh, not not focusing on any of the bats, but I wouldn't mind if you get to any Toronto bats. Yeah, I got I got some much grosser options than than, than Gaussman around that range that that, that I can play. Um, <laughs> uh, I I think I think though that, and I, I don't I don't have I don't have Talion uh, at all. Let me see if I can get Toronto in my stacks here. Um, not no, I mean not really. I mean I have them below even Baltimore. You know, I I. I it's one of those things, though. You know, I think the Toronto and and I, I dare say the Yankees. I, I think these teams are always kind of in play. You know, yeah. um, especially on a slate where you you're kind of looking to to squint and force teams in that otherwise you wouldn't want to. You know, um, uh, so I, I I have a feeling that that I could get to some of these guys also. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force these guys in either. But again, if I get to these guys in a 30 team build, I'll, I'll definitely won't be too upset about it. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I, I, I don't mind any, any bats. If you want us to play Vlad or anything like that, I just don't, I don't feel like these are the stacks that are going to win us all the money tonight. Uh, all right. Another decent pitching matchup, uh, McKenzie and Lynn. Um, I understand that they don't strike out a ton in Cleveland. I'm a little shocked to see how low Lynn is projected to be owned at 7,800. So he's going to be a guy I, I definitely look at. And then McKenzie, we we know the wide range of outcomes. Um, he can be he can strike out 10 and or 12, and he could get lit up in the second inning. I actually like both these guys a, a fair bit today. They're just there's a lot of pitchers that are just sort of in the mix for me, and these are two of them. Um, and they're just good enough to where I'm not going to play bats against them. Um, I w- I will say this. Um, Tristan McKenzie's a guy that we played, and and you 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 know you've had a lot of respect for him and his his upside. Mm-hmm. I'll also say something else. We, we we've been we've been very cautious about playing White Sox against righties in general. You know, yeah, they've been horrible this year. And and if if that's the case, and once again you're looking for 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 stuff to do, I think that McKenzie's kind of in play here. I mean, to say the least, um, yep. 8,900. Um, he's got a ceiling and, and you know, against a team that that's really struggled. I mean, that's the best I can describe it against righties. So um, I definitely think he's in play. I don't know if I can do Lance Lynn against, against the Cleveland team that doesn't strike out all that much. Um, but he certainly, you know, again, on this, on this slate, I don't know. I, I well, probably take, not I, right. You probably not enough of good other pitchers. I gotta take a stand somewhere. I, I don't think I'm gonna get to that. Um, let me see this the stacks if I can get to any of this. Obviously, I'm not gonna be playing the White Sox. I'm not. I shouldn't say obviously, but um, I'm not getting really to anything in this game. I'm not getting any of the hitting or the or the pitching actually. Now that I first look, now that I look at it. Yeah, I don't really have a whole lot of love for the hitting in it. I do like McKenzie. That's where you know I'm trying to get a little different with some of my pitching. So he's one of my guys. And then it feels like every matchup is a pitcher's matchup on this slate. Um, you, uh, Brady Singer has, has had four out of his last five games has been absolutely incredible. Um, he was great against this this team. He struck out 12 last time he faced them. I don't know what he's found exactly. Um, but he's And he's actually been really, really good for a little while now this season. I think that he is – I think he's actually going to be a lot more popular than he looks like he's going to be owned. But, again, there's a lot of pitchers, so it's hard to know. And then McClanahan – is probably you know the second best what will be will be the second most popular play on the slate, and I might be the best play to be honest with you. Um, uh, so I, I'm a high on McClanahan, and I actually like Singer too. Um, so both these guys are in my mix for for pitchers right now. Yeah, I was gonna uh, if, I, if I did the game first, I was gonna go do the things. I, I was gonna I was gonna give this intro. I was gonna say so. Here we have um, we have uh, two you know two really good pitchers here. We have someone who could be like the you know, the hottest pitcher in the league. And then also Shane McClanahan. Yeah. <laughs> um, McClanahan has been kind of struggling though. No, I mean, um, it's been, it's been, uh, it's, 
uh, as the kids say, it's like been a minute, right? Since he's yeah. put up a game that's uh, that's true. That's been really good. Um, actually, it's been quite a while since he put up like a really good game. Not since July second, and he had a couple of good ones. And he's been kind of struggling. I mean, at Detroit, yeah, um, yeah has, that was that was pretty awful. Um, yep. With that said, I mean, like you can't you can't dismiss everything else he's done this whole this whole season, you know. So. And and he's got a he's got a matchup against the team that can't hit the ball, um, so I think obviously it's going to be between him and Snell, right, as as, as the top play. And um, unfortunately for whatever, I mean, you'll be I'll probably be able to play both of them with San Francisco, so that'll be the chalk chalk pairing. But um, uh, he's definitely top two for me. And Brady Singer. I think you you think he has to be in play, like you were saying. You know these these younger guys, uh, including Clanahan, but these old guys always have upside. You know, and and maybe like you said, maybe he found something. You know, maybe 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 those like big ceiling performances aren't flukes anymore. Maybe you can expect stuff like that nowadays. I don't know. Um, so I definitely think he's in play among this whole glut of pitchers. You know that I have. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I think I'd rather play him than Gausman. Um, but not by much, you know what I mean? I'm looking at these two guys together. Um, but I do like that. I like McClanahan and I don't think I'm getting any of the pitching here. I mean, the hitting. <laughs> yeah. The only hitter that I'm interested in here is just a one-off of Brandon Lau. Um, I don't mind a Rosarena either, but I think the lot low is a very reasonable play. At- yeah. Those guys, the Tampa kind of got it going in the later innings there. Yeah. It um, took them a little while. They kept leaving yeah. everybody on base too. It's frustrating. And then, and then, 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 then in pure tilt, they, they, <laughs> Jim and choose to double and try to extend it into a triple for some reason. I know. I know. Any chance, like he had any hope for making it. <laughs> I know. It was ridiculous. Um, all right. Well, we got another another game that's not going to show up. Now, this is this is really weird to do on a full slate and something I never would have thought I would have been proposing. We haven't talked about any any stacks that I like yet, really, except for Boston and Baltimore a little bit. And those are just a little bit. If there was a I mean. If Trout's back in the lineup today, I think we have to consider the Angels as a stack here. The problem is you've got you know, medium nine mile an hour winds blowing in from center. Not ter- Not crazy. I'm open to, to 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 the Angels as a stack, which feels really weird to say out loud because uh, all we've done is pick on them and it's been right too. And uh, yeah, uh, you can run on Manning as well. So Tani becomes an even better play and he's somehow 6,500, which is, seems a little bit excessive. Um, it's not a fun lineup, but I do think the Angels are one of the uh, teams I'm considering stacking and it is because of Detroit and the fact that they've given up and Manning is a guy I don't have a lot of respect for yet. I think he's still trying to figure it out. Uh, oh, and Sandoval is Sandoval's another one of the guys in, the, in that pitching thing that we should consider, but I probably won't end up getting to. That's interesting. Um, I actually have um, Sandoval rated a little bit higher. Um, I have him right in that next group um, after um, Snell and McClanahan. When, when you factor everything else in. Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely have that. Um, the Manning, you know, the Manning thing, it's so funny. You know, it, it reminds me of, there was a, a football game as, you know, we kind of teased the football season uh, a couple of years ago when uh, the, uh, the quarterback for, the, I think it was Peterson, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, for, for, for uh, he was on Buffalo, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and he literally, every time he touched the ball, he threw a pick six. Like there was, there was one game where they were playing like at Pittsburgh or something like that, or at somebody uh, or at Baltimore, I forget who it was, but the defense was a higher salary than the quarterback. And I'd never seen that. I'd never seen that before, you know? Yeah. And, and that, that reminded me of that when you said that Otani where it was 6,500 yeah. and Manning, the opposing pitcher is, is 6,300. Um, Cause you don't see that at all that, that often either. No, you, when, when you have an actual starting pitcher. You know? Right. Um, so uh yeah, one of these days, man, he's going to put up a good game, I think. But he's going to have to put up one before I play him. You know what I mean? Um, the Angels one is interesting. Um, we have no umpires on this game yet, right? No umpire yet. Okay. It's- so for now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off on the hitting in this game. But I, I will, uh, I will recommend Sandoval at least for now as a pitcher. Yeah. And and I am curious why the why the Angels would bring Trout back today, but 
Okay. It, uh, if they're going to, and he plays I, that stack becomes a lot more interesting. <laughs> um, it's fun to actually have guys you like to play in the, in your stacks instead of the, uh, just, you, you know, yep. point poking, whatever. Um, all right. McCullers and Kyle, Wright, And that, I mean, it's, it's crazy about how good the mid tier matchups are today. What I would say here is I think that Atlanta is something we could do to get off the board a little bit. Uh, Houston does have a really good bullpen. We know Atlanta has got a really explosive offense. Uh, I love that stadium for hitting. Oh, there's a game with some weather. Um, they've got, they've got a little bit of weather concerns here. I, I'm not considering either pitcher, but if this game is a go ahead, I, I will consider some Atlanta. Um, I don't love it or anything, but we know that there's just an explosive offense and we're looking for something to do on a, on a slate that doesn't really have a whole lot of great things that we've come across yet. So I think it, like an unowned Atlanta stack is 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 mildly interesting against McCullers for 50 pitches in sort of a bullpen game. I don't know 50. I'm just throwing out a number. I don't know why I said that, actually. He threw more than that in the last game. No, McCullers would actually be okay, but I don't know. I, I think I'd probably stay away, but I do have Atlanta as like a, a long shot play. That's yeah. Um, I think that I think that both of these, this, this hitting, both hitters are kind of in play here a little Fair bit. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah. Um, and but again, I, I don't want to mess around with pop up storms in Atlanta. I, I don't think. Um, no, no, we got we got we got to keep an eye on that. But uh, again, yeah, moving for something low owned. But you know what? I, uh, maybe we're just supposed to attack like worse pitchers than these. Um, maybe, but the one thing is, Kyle Wright has been giving up just home runs left and right. He's they're crushing the ball off of him lately. Maybe you're right about the Houston thing a little bit. I certainly like Alvarez as a one off. I mean, obviously it's, he's expensive, but. Um, you know, absolutely crushes right-handed pitching, crushes all pitching, to be honest with you. He's got, he's basically a home run pretend at bats against a guy who literally has been just getting lit up. So I, I'm kind of into the, the the idea of at least getting maybe a piece or two, uh, Acuna and, and I mean, they're both expensive, but Acuna and Alvarez are both certainly interesting and will be low on. So I like, I like those two as one-offs at least. All right. Uh, Minnesota and Texas. Uh Okay, like I feel like we're playing like small states. I think we're gonna we're, we're about to run into some better games here. Uh, I'm not playing these pitchers. It would never surprise me if Bundy put put up 22, 24 fantasy points. Uh, Martin. Well, well, let me let's let's let, let, let's stop for a second. Why 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 aren't we playing uh, Dylan Bundy? Why would we be? Well, because, because they're against, guys. Because he's, I don't know because we you know he's against who, Texas. who are we playing him instead of? Like we just named like sixteen pitchers, and do I want to play him instead of Sandoval? That would be the closest one you could compare. Right. I think he's had one 20 fantasy point game in his last 20 starts. Um, I don't really see what we're doing if we're playing him here. Like we're, okay. we're really hoping for something that that, that may not even exist. Um, like I said, one, I mean, literally one 20 fantasy point game. And he said, he, so he had the two to two, uh, two in back in April. Um, and then basically it's negative points and single digits mostly. And I, I know it's a an, an okay matchup on paper, but I, I don't know. I, I don't personally see any any way to do this. He's got a three and a half K prop. Um, I would rather play Manning than I would Bundy probably tonight. And I don't I just don't think this is this is a spot where I need to play a guy like that on a 14 game slate. I mean, in fairness, I have him rated like a hundredth in my pitchers. I mean, I don't even have I can't even find his projection. He's not showing up here. I'm just kind of just, you know, again, I'm on a slate like this, I'm just kind of just throwing 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 crap out there just to see if maybe yeah. I can catch something um but like you said there's a lot of listen there's, there's a lot of pitchers you can pick here that are they're not going to be high on i mean what 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 i don't think you need to do this i'll just yeah. go up there and 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 perez i mean and rutiz cy young maybe this is not bad in 8100 uh i don't know just who um, you playing him over exactly with yeah exactly you know, like, well, like we're well, like, gonna play him over over um brady singer or uh or Gausman even probably yeah. not. No, because those guys at least can they flash the ceiling. You know what I mean? He he, yeah. he has to like have everything go perfectly. And he, I'm not even saying that he doesn't deserve credit for being in the same like conversation as a, as good a pitcher as those guys. But even when he's really on, it's not like he's going out there and putting up 30 fantasy points unless he basically has like a perfect game going into the eighth or something. Um. However, they're both. You know, I I, I do think that that maybe Texas is being overlooked here against Bundy. Um. I certainly will consider it. Uh. I, I'm not like absolutely in love with it, but again, I'm not really in love with a lot of these stacks in this slate. 
So, and, and then on the, the flip side, I, I don't want to stack Minnesota. I don't like stacking against Perez. We know that, but I do think Miranda and Buxton specifically are really strong plays. These guys are just, I mean, Miranda's done nothing. He's seven home runs, 92 at bats against lefties this season. That's awesome. He's been really, really with 11 extra base hits. He's, he's, he, I mean, that's, that's a, that's what you're going one out of eight and a half at bats. He's got an extra base hit against, against lefties and, and as much as I think Perez is fine, I mean he's thirty eight hundred. I just like Miranda a lot, and I want to bet on the bet on this guy on the way up. And I like Buxton because he's just always been a guy who kills left handed pitching. He's got ten home runs and ninety eight at bats against lefties this year. Um, and uh, there's a little bit of stolen base you can occasionally steal on on Bucks on Perez. So I think both these offenses are. I'm not going to play the the stack for Minnesota, but I like the Buxton Miranda, and then I like Texas as a potential stack. Well, maybe maybe what you said about Bunny though we should should stand out. I mean, is it's only a three point seven run total against him. Um, I think I would lean more towards the Texas bats, but I and then I really like Corey Seager as a one, you know just individual plays. I'm trying to focus more on some of these guys who I want to play as one offs, and I, I think Corey Seager and Jonah Heim both stand out for their positions um, today. All right, now we get to the chalk. The the I, I think this chalk this gate this. This might be one of the most chalky spots we see on a 14 game slate this entire season. Well, let me, let me ask, let me ask you this. So again, the, the, the devil's advocate has entered the building, right? So I want to Let's ask do it. you. Okay. Um, so uh, I was listening to actually, I don't, I listen, I started doing this. I don't listen to it as many of the other podcasts anymore, but I, I actually was listening to morning, the morning grind today. Um, and, and, and your friend and Grant was on there. He mentioned something that I, I wanted to research a little more is that while arena like gives up like a lot of runs or whatever it is that he doesn't really give up that many home runs. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know if that's accurate or true or whatever, but I, it's something to look into. Um, because again, I'm trying to find any reason to, to kind of fade San Francisco. And, and if it's, and if you combine, if that's actually true and, and the run total of six is more combined of, 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 of singles, doubles, and nonsense, right? Plus the possibility for San Francisco pinch hit risk coming into play. Um, may, maybe, maybe they're not like a total smash. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just at, at 30%, you know, 25% plus ownership stat, you know, as a stat. That's, that's, that's all I got um, with respect to why you would want to fade. Well, it's hard with him because he usually gets knocked out of the game before he can give up all the home runs. Uh, that's the truth. <laughs> like, I mean, in a lot of these starts, you're looking at like three innings. Um, but basically he's given up eight home runs in 48 innings. So that is bad, but not like the, maybe the worst, if you want to try to find an excuse, why not right. to do it? And, and what's weird is he's kind of like, he's kind of worked deeper into games. Like than you would kind of think, uh, doesn't strike anybody out. Uh, you can run on him. It's 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 going to be tough to to other than just game theory and hey it's baseball to not have some to to not play San Francisco for me right. um, and and Colorado has also has nothing to play for really um, at the same time you could just flip this on the other side Alex Wood a guy who uses a lot of breaking stuff uh, pitching against a team that's been pretty good against lefties especially at home I think Colorado is certainly in play and I think that. I mean I think you're talking about let's let me just double check what what Saber Sim says before I put my foot in my mouth. Um, you're going to have basically what everybody on San Francisco is going to be. Uh, these projections aren't even right. I'm telling you, they're ridiculous. I mean, Jock Peterson is not going to be 11% owned. He's going to be 20 plus percent. Well, maybe not. Cause they're all going to play the other San Francisco guys. I think they're all going to be in the 20. It's going to be like a 20% stack. I really believe that. Whereas you have nobody on Colorado who's probably going to be 10% on. So that's a perfect pivot to me. Um, same game, obviously, uh, you know, a little bit of weather possibilities, not, not crazy hot and nine mile an hour winds blowing in. There's another reason for you to, you know, yeah. 75 degrees, which is actually nice for Colorado, but not nice for summer Colorado. It's not like the 95 we've been seeing. So, and, and you could, you, you know, you could do other things like stack the bottom of the lineup. What I would say is like, if JD Davis is in the lineup against a righty, then I'd feel very good about it because uh, it's much less likely he gets pinch hit for when you start against the same mm -hmm. hand. He doesn't mm -hmm. use when he's on the bench. So it actually makes you, when you see if he's in the starting lineup, you, you feel a lot better about maybe not getting those pinch hitters later in the game. Um, Joey Bart would probably be like, I mean, I think he's the best catching option. Uh, he, the guy's got a lot like serious power anyway, and he's 2.5 K in Coors. And 
And Arena is one of the worst pitchers in baseball. And you're and you're you are right that he doesn't get give up as many home runs as maybe some other guys do. But I mean, eight and forty eight. So that's that's one out of that's two for five, two, two two per nine. That's still pretty high. I mean, and again, it's it. Some of those games are on the road. This is in this is against a, a pretty good offense with some real power spots. I think the priorities are Peterson, um, Peterson, probably Davis Flores. Um, and I think we have no Brandon belt likely tonight. So okay, that, that, that also is a little knock on their lineup, but I really like the Rockies here. I, I think that this is a spot where we maybe not even you can full stack. I don't think you have even have to, but like getting low ownership on CJ Cron and Brendan Rogers, Connor, Joe, um, Randall Gritchick, uh, Montero, at 2.8 K he's the one cheap Rocky. I, I think there's, there's something you could do here. I, I feel kind of okay about taking some shots with the Rockies today. Yeah, I have, I have the Rockies as, um, yeah, I have the Rockies as one of those, like one of those teams in that second, in that second tier um, that, you know, at, at the right ownership is, is worth, is worth playing. And, and as you mentioned, I, I don't see Colorado being, I don't see them being owned almost at all. I mean, mm-hmm. I shouldn't say that. I I I, ha, I don't have them own any more than some of these other teams in the same range. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I I got no problem with that. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense in some ways. I mean, you have a good pitcher on one side in Wood and a bad pitcher on the other side, and they're much more expensive. The Rockies, but that's why they won't get played. So they're, you know, we don't the the, the whole Coors thing has sort of taken on a world of its own in, in DFS and the way people talk about it. Oh, I don't want to play. They, they just sort of assume, and the Rockies rarely get owned, if ever. And right. they've been good against lefties all season long. So I'm into the uh, I'm into the Rockies. I think I think that I'm going to talk myself into to to going here. I also want to see what kind of pit, what kind of umpire we end up having here because it it is a if if you get if you get a real I mean some of these guys have been hilariously bad this year. If you get a, a hitter's umpire, I, I could see just making a game stack out of that. All right. Um, this is a, an interesting spot here because I, I think it's a, it's a stadium downgrade for St. Louis playing indoors in Arizona here, but they've got a huge run total and you put a lefty, uh, any, a lefty. I mean, this guy can't have a, a future. I know he's, I know he's got some, some, some people have said some good things about him or whatever, but Tommy Henry, but I, I don't know, man. It's this is this is probably the natural pivot stack, I guess, would be uh, St. Louis uh, along with Colorado, and I don't think they're going to be especially high owned because of their pricing, and I think that they're 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 humming. They're we've seen them explode a few times lately. I do want to point out that as they've gotten better, they're doing exactly what everybody else does, and they are you oh, you will see pinch hitters for St. I mean, exactly what all the other teams that are really good do there you're gonna see pinch hitters a lot more down the stretch of the season for them like they did yesterday up six nothing in the second inning with donovan already being two for two and then they pinch hit pujols um because they brought a lefty in with with nobody out and the bases loaded and they of course hit a grand slam of course you're you're, you're gonna you're gonna see some pinch hitters so and, and, and results like that just just gives them the trigger to do that every single time now <laughs> yeah and then and what i do like though is like you know it's it's probably it's too creative for this play it's slate to play like Newt Bar in the nine hole because he's, he's probably batting ninth against the lefty, but like if if you if you're starting against a lefty that that's the guy I'm not worried about getting pinch hit for you know what I mean, um, and I don't know how many lefties they actually have on their bench because mostly it's usually they bring in they do it lefty for righty oh I guess they got Donovan on the bench, um, but yeah I, I think St Louis is is very viable I wish the roof was open I would be all over this, and I mean if we're talking about sixty six hundred for 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 Dylan Bundy. We should at least mention that Nicholas is seventy three hundred. Um, he got I got, no, I got no I got no problem. I have no problem with that. Yeah, Nicholas. I mean, you're talking about like an unowned guy who, I I mean, when he goes out, he's so efficient with his pitches that like there's always a chance he throws that complete gamer. I mean, through eight, he pitched an eight inning game last time he was out there. He's just he you know he doesn't walk people. Look at his walk. His walk rate is incredible. Um, it's not quite as what it was uh, last year, I believe, but. It, it, Look, if you can, and Arizona will will chase early in counts. If you get a few like six pitch innings, and then you mix in the strikeouts as the game goes on, I could see Mike Mikolas being really really solid tonight, and obviously has huge win equity. Um, so I, I like Mikolas actually as a maybe a little bit off the board guy, but I've mentioned probably too many pitchers on this slate to to keep recommending guys, but I do think Mikolas is viable completely. I have uh, currently um, St. Louis. I mean, if I want to split hairs, I like the second best stack actually. Um, that's what I think makes sense. Yeah, so I, I kind of like that. Um, um, 
So I, I agree with that. Um, so I, I, I don't know if I can get to Mikolas today. Again, I think just those other guys are just better that we mentioned. But um, uh, so I definitely have St. Louis as, as, a, as a main a main pivot stack for me. One other thing I want to give a little edge to for Mikolas above some of the other situations. I really like when pitchers who haven't faced a team hardly ever in their career. Um, they did have one start against them this year. He put up 24 fantasy points, which I'd be very happy with tonight, by the way. I would be very happy with if I was paying 7,300, 24 fantasy points is is pretty much what you're going to ask for. You have some other guys who are probably going to put up 30s, but I, 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 they haven't faced him much in the in the past. And I always give an edge to the to the pitchers in that spot, unless it's like a pitcher who gets wild against a team that's really patient. But I, I like St. Louis a lot here today, so I, I I'm I think I'm I'm in on St. Louis. But they are going to be, you know, again, and if you're playing the lottery, it's it doesn't look like much when everybody's seven percent, eight percent owned, but it, you're you're competing still with a lot of people. So, and there's 14 yeah. games to choose from today, so they're not going to be crazy low owned. Maybe we can find another spot to. Uh, it seems like the late games sheets. We're going to wait a while before we know how our lineups are doing tonight because mostly I don't, I don't have a lot of interest in the hitting in the early games, and it's it's really all these late games, and we're going to get into one more in just a second. Yeah. Well, here comes here. here here's the chalk, right? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, one of them, so there's McClanahan and there's Snell. You know, Snell is fairly reasonably priced against uh, a team that can't hit the ball. So uh, aside from the normal, I don't want to say normal, aside from the, I guess, occasional Snell variants, which I have not seen yet. I mean, like every every start, he's over 20 fantasy points, it seems. Um, oh, there's it's, one. We, I, the variance is still, he, you know, he did it, though. I mean, we, 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 for a while, his last few starts, he's only three starts. He's only had two walks. I don't know if he's ever done that in his career. Yeah. Um, he's, he is, he, cause he, I mean, he, he had the six walk game earlier in the year. He had a, a bunch of the four, he, the walk four guys in five, in five innings, two guys in five innings, three guys in five. Innings. Like it's the same team at Washington, 10 and zero, 10 strikeouts, zero walks. Jeez. I know. And it is the same team and you're in a, in a better pitching environment. It's really hard to argue against him as the top pitcher on the slate to me. Um, but you know, I, 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 I believe in variance. I believe in variance in baseball. And I would say that if you're not going to play him, that why wouldn't we take a, like a, a one-off against him? Not that you need to get that creative, but like Cruz or something. Like yeah. I mean, Cruz has been, this year has not been the same against lefties as he has during his career, but I'll bet on career numbers, especially, you know, if he gets a little wild or anything like that, uh, Luke Voigt, for some reason, uh, this, this is shocking to me. He has one for the Yankees at one point last year, or it was the year before, I think he had 15 home runs in like, 80 at bats against left-handed pitching. He was just killing left-handed pitching. He's got one home run in 125 plate appearances against lefties. Um, he has walked a ton for some reason against them. So that's, I guess, I don't know. I'm just trying to find something here. I think Joey Manessis, all those guys are are viable if you want to play against Snell because we know that when Snell starts missing, he'll give up a home run. And uh, what else he will do is you can absolutely run all over him. I just don't know who I would pick to run on them for Washington. So uh I don't know. I'm just throwing things out there uh, for those of you maybe playing the late slate. And then the, I guess the the other headline in this is that San Diego was terrible yesterday. They're really expensive. And I think they make perfect sense to go right back to today. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I have San Diego is look, I, uh, I meant I've been alluding to this like second tier of, of, of teams right under San Francisco. And, and I already talked about St. Louis. We mentioned Colorado. I put Boston in there, maybe some Houston. We'll get to another one in a minute, but I think San Diego's right up there with that, and especially coming off of the dud performance on the on the small slate last night. Um, maybe maybe people don't play them as much today. Um, they still do have a uh, you know pretty healthy total, right? Five. Um, so I think people will play them, but maybe maybe are too expensive, you know? Uh, maybe because look, I, I put up on this board here. I mean, you have you put Snell and McCl and Snell and McClanahan in the lineup. You can play like every single San Francisco now. It's ridiculous. It's so you know, easy to do. You know, in, in so, cash so. games, that's honestly what you should do today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I don't even see a reason to like to not fully stack San Francisco in a, in a cash. Well, maybe you go four man stack in a cash game or something. I don't know. But uh -huh. yeah, San Diego looks pretty good to me. I mean, this is, and, and, and again, it's not anything shocking. They have the second highest run total on the slate, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally in business of going back to San Diego and they are going to be lower owned than some of the other pivots because of their prices. Like I think even the Dodgers might have three guys who, who hit double digits or come near it, but like San Diego, I don't think has anyone outside of Soto that will be more than any owned <laughs> more than more than 10%. Um, 
And how did, how did what's his name do yesterday? We got Myers is twenty six hundred. I don't know if my I, I would be surprised if Myers is in the lineup today. I was yeah, kind of surprised he was right. in it yesterday though. So, um, but at least then we made a little little bit more sense. But anyway, I mean, well, what's, what's Grisham uh, nowadays? Thirty three. Grissom's 33. He batted leadoff yesterday. My guess is they'll, they'll, they, they gave the guys the day off yesterday. I mean, they gave Profar and, and, uh, Alfaro, they gave him the day off. yeah, Profar, Alfaro got the day off. Um, it's a pretty strong lineup in San Diego and they're just priced like they're basically they're, they're priced for cores and San Francisco's pl- priced to be right. played. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. In some field, maybe, they, maybe they did. They put the SD instead of SF and they just ruined the, <laughs> I don't know. I wonder what DraftKings is going to do next year. And a real conversation real quick is I, I do think it's kind of bizarre that they, they were so good about it for a while. I mean, they were yeah. hiking it up like to ridiculous. Remember people. that they had like the Stremsky, like 5,800 and like yeah. uh, guys yeah. who were 2k are now like 6k. Like it was like ridiculous. Um. But yeah, I'm I'm on board with San Diego. It's going to be a West Coast night for me. It absolutely, you know, I mean, West Coast can count in Colorado. And speak, that. speak speaking of which, yeah, um, can I interest you in, in in Marco Gonzalez tonight? Do we need it? No, <laughs> <laughs> but 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 it'll help if you want to like get ultra cute and, and play all the San Diego's at six k, <laughs> or, or, or 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 if you want to play Otani Trout or something like that, you know, it's, it'll certainly help. I think that Marco Gonzalez is is totally fine on if you're playing the night the late the late slate or something. Okay, fair. I enough. don't think I would do it any earlier than that. But I'll tell you what I do like in this game is I am going to I'm going to keep doing it. And I look, it hasn't worked out every day. It's not it's not going to in baseball. You're going to play Hanniger every day. I'm going to play Hanniger every day when he's under 4K. When he's under 5K, even I consider. I mean, I really think this guy's a real player. I know he hasn't been. You know, he's been hurt all year, so you can't really measure things. And you have some guys like Ty France and. Eugenio Suarez, like he, I mean, he, yeah. the, the lefty he crushed it. The, he, he hasn't crushed been it. He crushed it. Yeah, but he, but he's got, he's got massive power. Then you've got Santana. I don't think I want to fully stack here, but I, I certainly don't mind taking bats from Seattle and start. And Hanniger being the the main one I want, along with J Rod. Um, J Rod's expensive. I mentioned a lot of expensive outfielders. He ranks in there for me. He's right there with those other guys. Uh, you know the the Alvarez's and the uh, the Kunas. But um, this kid is going to be. I mean. I, He's going to be. I think everybody knows by now. He's going to be one of the best players in baseball for the for the foreseeable future. Hanniger, he uh, thirty seven hundred. Uh, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty. Well, I, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> what I was going to propose is, if you tell you what, if you if you want to leave a bunch of money on the table and play San Francisco, you could just go, go double Bay Area, and, yeah. and and play Chad Pinder at two K. Right. Um, with historical numbers versus like, like good numbers versus lefties. And he's even this year, he's six home runs, 118 at bats. That's fine by me. Um, uh, Sean Murphy is, is, is an actual real player who, who can hit. And then maybe you, you put in either a, a new say who actually has, this guy has tremendous power, but doesn't, it doesn't actually realize it very often. It's just, I, I watched him play, take batting practice and it actually blew my mind. He was hitting the ball out of Dodger stadium over and over again. Um, but I mean, they've, they've got the two K guys. You've got the Nick Allen, Chad Pinder, you just, just mentioning it for fillers. Uh, I don't think I'm certainly not talking about stacking the A's, but I do think you could use these guys for fillers for sure. And that late Langoliers down at the bottom, I wouldn't mind ending up with him as catcher. He had some pretty decent power numbers in the minors. And, uh, I think he's, a, I think he's actually a talent. So, well, you know, consider an A's, an A's style talent. <laughs> so if you didn't like, if you didn't like any of that, um, so you have Dodgers at home against Miami. And we do, we talked about some good 8K, you know, some decent 8K options. We talked about Gausman. We talked about um, Brady Singer. I mean, the one thing about Tyler Anderson, he's going to probably start the game with four fantasy points because they're the Dodgers are going to win, right? You'd so that, that's something. Um, it doesn't strike anybody out, it seems, which is yeah. kind of kind of a problem. Um, so I, I guess I'm not going to get to there. Anyway, all right. Um, no, but I hear you though. Like I, 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 I it, you know, it's it, funny though, Sheets. We're going to feel like idiots when it's like we get the we get the little notification. The Tyler Anderson has a perfect game going into the eighth inning or something, and only 70 pitches thrown or something like that. That's the way he'll get you there. Is is yeah. He just doesn't. Um, you're right. He doesn't strike anybody out. And and unfortunately, I I, I, have, I do have the Dodgers rated as that other kind of team in this area. I, I don't like playing them against lefties. Um, um, but like you said, I mean, I'm looking for anything. Um, I think the Dodgers are going to be, are they going to be owned? I don't, I don't think so. I think it's only going to be Turner, Betts, and Will Smith will be owned. 
I mean, you could play. You could play. You could play an overpriced Freeman lefty lefty. That would be fun. You could do that. Um, you don't even need to get that creative if you want to, but you can. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, but yeah, I think the Dodgers are certain. I mean, they're, they're always they're always good. You know, what I mean? like doesn't matter who they're who they're up against. And and listen, you know, they 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 did me. They did very very nicely by me yesterday in that afternoon slate where I made money because because they did just enough. They chased freaking Burns out of there. I mean, Burns was kind of like cruising a little bit. And I had the, I had other pitchers, and I just needed them to just prevent Burns from just smashing. And then they totally got to him in like the, in what was going to be probably Burns' last inning. Um, and they put a couple of runs up. And they held him like fourteen fantasy points. So the Dodgers, they I don't care who they're up against. They they're always in play. You know what I mean? they, they make you work. They're tough to they're tough to play against. Yeah. You need to get like you really. I mean, you can't get wild against the Dodgers, and Lazardo definitely can get wild at times. Uh, when that happens, when if you get wild against this team, I mean, they they they're just gonna. They'll work counts. They'll do all their thing, and then you get the you get the, the couple big home runs with the, the couple big three run home runs, along with the moving the runners along, and all of a sudden right. the Dodgers become a great stack. So I, I do have the Dodgers right there with these guys. Yep. Um, I, I think that I mean right now I have a very hard time ranking my second stacks, but I have San Francisco as the clear and obvious number one. Yep. The stacks that I'm most likely to use as my full five men would probably be Colorado. Well, it's probably be St. Louis, San Diego, Colorado, then the Dodgers. But I might I might bump the Dodgers up a little bit because and, and you know, the other thing about just to throw this out there about Lazardo is it's not like this guy is like a terrible pitcher. Um, he actually has good stuff. He's missed some of the season because he was injured. Um, but you have a terrible bullpen behind him. I mean, he just put up 30 the other day, like Lazardo. He's got he's got reasonable stuff. He can be really, really hard to hit at times. But when he gets wild uh and even if he you know even if he does have it under control i'm curious where the what kind of umpire we get he's got a five and a half k prop against the dodgers which is pretty high um i i still think the dodgers are, are just extremely viable here it's nice hitting weather in la 74 degrees for us is always reasonable and a little bit of wind blowing out so i, I have the dodgers behind these other teams but i might end up uh sneaking them in and I don't think they're that far behind San Diego. Uh, but like you said, it's always worrisome against lefties. They do have, I just, I went through all their numbers against lefties early this morning and bets. I mean, bets and Turner really actually have been great against lefties all season long. And Will Smith is probably the most overrated versus lefties of anybody. And Freddie Freeman has only hit four home runs in 156 plate appearances against lefties this season for what it's worth. So it's kind of hard for me to justify 5.6 K considering that but if you're fully stacking i have no problem it, the numbers after that against lefties get pretty grim pretty fast um including guys like trace thompson who only starts against lefties but for some reason only hits home runs against righties i don't know how that works um but yeah i think bet smith and and turner as a three-man stack to maybe maybe go with a of a, a, i don't know if it, even that might be too chalky with a five-man san francisco but that would be the way to do it if you're gonna if you're gonna do it i think before we get into a, a summary of it, I, I just looked at FanDuel just for a second, just to see if there's anything different. Now I still see Snell McClanahan kind of at the top of the list over there, and then stack wise, it's uh, it seems to me the same. Um, yeah, nobody really moves up for me on on FanDuel relative to the way they were on DraftKings. You know, it's funny though. One thing that I do want to point out about FanDuel today, because I think it's I think it's interesting about the pitching decision. Cause you're going to have basically all the ownership will be on Snell McClanahan. I think you get some on Brady singer as well. Uh, the guy who's most likely to have a quality start here is probably not a, neither of these guys. It's probably Aaron Nola who's going to be unowned. So that might be a, a really good way. And you could do whatever you want in terms of playing popular bats. Cause Aaron Nola at like 5% ownership. I mean, uh, he's 500 cheaper than, than McClanahan. He's 200 more than Snell and sure he has a tougher matchup, but the guy does not – he doesn't get lit up. He, I mean, try show me his game log and show me a game where he didn't pitch six innings. I think it's been – it's happened a couple times all season long. And sure, he's got hit some some of those later in the game. But, I mean, the guy's like a 92% quality start guy. Like, I mean, it just feels like a, a good spot to, to, to get different. So I really like that NOLA is what stands out to me the most. And then I still think San Francisco is also too cheap on – on a uh, fan duel and depending on whether Brandon belt plays, of course, cause he's, he's one of the bats you'd want to get in. But if you play Nola, you can go ahead. You have my full permission to go ahead and fully stack San Francisco, because I don't think you need to worry about the ownership as much when you're playing a guy who's 5% owned. Right. I agree. Um, and by the way, he might be my favorite of all three, the one I feel the most comfortable with and he's 5% owned. So I, I, feel I, like I, I, I just for the record, I don't think he's going to be 5%. 
you think he's going to be higher on FanDuel? Yeah, I got. I have him already at ten. Okay. Um, I mean, not that that's a lot, but um, I mean, I, I I have currently like Snell and McLean hit like thirty and twenty five or something, mm-hmm. and then Nola at like eleven. I think in the high buy ins, you'll see that number a little bit higher on those guys. Yeah, uh, I think so. But I think that I, but so if Nola's 11, but even at 11%, I think that's still reasonable. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I really, I really like Nola. And for once this whole season, they didn't overly uh, raise the prices on San Francisco, which is going to make them really popular. But you can combo stack them with any of the teams we mentioned and still get enough off the board, I believe. Um, the way I've got it ranked, I, I mentioned that, that the Colorado, St. Louis, San Diego, LA will be my main focus of other stacks. I also want to keep looking into Texas and Boston. Yeah, I don't like to play more than five stacks in general, no matter how many lineups I'm playing for the most part. Um, but I think that maybe maybe not as full stacks, but I can take seven teams if I'm using, you know, four of them for mini stacks and three of them for full stacks, basically. And this does feel to me like a, a you should probably be full stacking or at least going 4-4 four, four or 4-3-1 four, on this slate. That's my general stuff. I did also want to mention really quick, I've got it. I've got the, I mean, McClanahan, Nola, Snell, I have is the best. My next favorites are Gaussman, McKenzie, and, and Singer. My favorite one-offs are Hanager, Devers, uh, for value, Fraley, Mustakas, Brandon Lau um, as a as a as a as a spend up, Alvarez, Acuna, Buxton, Seeger. Those are just some of the the, the at bats that stand out to me. And um, I know it's a lot of names to throw out there, but it's baseball. There's however many what 270 players playing tonight. So uh, I'm trying to focus and keep my keep my my 15 guys that I like combined with my five stacks which is really like three stacks and then all mini stacks after that i'm actually going to be around uh tonight uh for the six for the live thing so i will see you there for that and um yeah and and, and for those of you who were you know, uh, are gonna be around this weekend um i'm out tomorrow hopefully we get goldie to put up some projections for tomorrow but i'll be back for sunday and um you know a lot of a lot of stuff going on this weekend Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, good luck to everybody today. Sheets. Good job. And then, uh, wait, did you say you'll be here at six or not? I don't think I will be. actually. Oh, you will. Amazing. Yes. Friday night sheets. What do we got? Yes, Friday night sheets. Special, and it's special, time. special appearance. Can you help get this, this monkey off my, I can't get a, I can't win. I I've having, I'm, I'm on like a two and a half week streak. Well, all I can I, say is this. I have mean, like one you know, winning if day. You're, if you're going to come up with Barrios, I, I don't know what I can, what else I can do for you because you're supposed, yeah. what I would say is you're supposed to win if you come up with that. Somehow. You know what happens though to me is then I, I go, okay, well I'll play Barrios in my lineups with San Diego guys. Right. And then, I up, and then San but, Diego. But it was so funny. Team. I want to go back to those lineups that I was kind of like screwing around with when I said, okay, now if you play this, you, and I tell you there was a brew baker with what's his name. With uh, a brew baker with Barrios with a bunch with Pittsburgh in there, and you're like, you don't even need to do that much. Right. But if we did, we'd get all the cheese. <laughs> I, I had I had my lineup. I was gonna actually post it in our Discord, which I should have done because I was worried about chickens myself. But I, I, after Reynolds' second home run, I had just Barrios. All I had going was Barrios, Reynolds, um, Vlad, who hit the home run, and then I had San Diego four man stack with uh, Darvish, and then somebody else in the late game. Um, I can't remember or in one of the later games. And I was like, oh, I could make all the money in this one. And of course I got like a combined two points out other than those guys. <laughs> anyway, baseball's crazy and it's time. I really, really want to end this month strong and be ready for NFL. So I'm hoping I can get a win tonight. And I'm hoping that other guys, uh, we, you guys can as well. So good luck to everybody. And we'll uh, hopefully see you at the top of leaderboards, no matter what we'll see at six. All right. See you then.